Checky, with the rise of AI, English is becoming one of the most important and most used programming languages in the world. Let me give you a brief history of programming and where it came from to where it is at today. I'll give it in a form of a story so that you don't get bored and sleep during the video. So our story begins in 1843, where a lady called Ada Lovelace, who is considered one of the first computer programmers in the world. She worked with Charles Babbage for a concept of a very revolutionary machine, which they called the analytical engine. The analytical engine was a proposed digital mechanical general purpose computer, which was designed by an English mathematician and computer pioneer called Charles Babbage. Although it was never built, Babbage's vision was groundbreaking. He envisioned a machine that could actually perform any computation given precise instructions. This might seem like something very basic, but in 1843, this was very revolutionary. Ada Lovelace took it a step further. She envisioned machines could be used for purposes more than pure calculations, predicting what we call today general purpose computing. Though the analytical engine remained theoretical, it laid the conceptual groundwork for all future computing machines. Lovelace's notes and algorithms, like one that uh, computed Bernoulli numbers, show that computers, rather than doing math, could actually do more complex tasks and handle more complex problems. Now fast forward, the first language was created, and it was called the assembly language. This was the first step away from just raw binary, because machines understand binary, zeros and ones. This was the first step away from binary. It helped humans now write instructions for the machine in a more readable format for the human being, rather than writing zeros and ones. With assembly, we had something much closer to the human language. This was very important in building machines such as the ENIAC and the IBM 701. This had very practical applications, especially in like predicting itinerary trajectories in World War II and it marked the beginning of programming in computing. Assembly actually solved complex mathematical problems and laid the groundwork for what we call general purpose computing right now. Now let's move forward to 1957, where a girl called John Backers created the Fortan language, which basically stands for formula translation. This made it easier for the scientists and the engineers to solve more complex calculations. Fortran made it very simple to use, yet powerful enough for mathematical calculations. It was very pivotal in aerospace engineering, helping scientists run simulations for early space missions and jet designs. This, as you can imagine, really helped NASA, and it really powered the early startup missions and aerodynamic research, changing how scientists just modeled real-life phenomena. A couple of years later, in 59, a lady called Grace Harper. She created the Common Business Oriented Language, abbreviated to COBOL, C-O-B-O-L. This was designed for businesses and it was made to look more like English to help businesses solve their problems easily. This helped like the government people and the business people to write code without having a very deep technical experience or expertise. COBOL powered government and financial systems that actually are being used up to date. COBOL basically revolutionized business computing, managing millions of transactions, financial transactions for banks, insurance companies, and government agencies. Things like IRS and social security. IRS is basically KRA, but for the US. In the 70s, the rise of C, the headache for most of the programmers, and Unix came to be, with the help of a guy called Dennis Ritchie. In the 70s, C became the go-to programming language, thanks to its balance between power and simplicity. Dennis Ritchie used C to create Unix operating system, which actually forms the foundation for today's Linux and Mac OS. C introduced portability. Code written in C could actually be run on different machines. It was very essential for creating operating systems and embedded systems, and it actually later inspired languages like, like Java and Python, etc. Still in the 70s, there was the birth of something called object-oriented programming. I'm explaining that in a few. There's a programming language which was called Smalltalk, which was created by a guy called Alan Kay. Smalltalk actually introduced us to object-oriented programming. You might ask yourself, what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming actually allowed developers to model real-world concepts as objects, revolutionizing how software was created. I'll give you an example. Imagine you're writing software for like a car. In object-oriented programming, you will create a car object 
with properties like speed and methods like acceleration. This made code way more reusable and way easier to manage. Smalltalk actually influenced the creation of modern day graphical user interfaces, paving way for systems such as Apple's Macintosh and later on Windows. Now jump forward like two decades later, and now the internet has really started growing. This is something Brain H really noticed and created the JavaScript programming language. JavaScript brought a lot of interactiveness to the web. It allowed websites to grow from just static web pages to dynamic web applications, allowing the rise of web services such as Google Maps and YouTube and Facebook and everything that we know today. JavaScript was fast, very flexible, and became one of the most widely used programming languages for web development. It is still the backbone for modern day web development, and it's running on billions of devices that we use. Still in the 90s, a guy called Guido Van Rossum, I hope I haven't butchered that name, but he developed the Python programming language. Python really emphasized on readability and simplicity because usually you hear Python actually reads like English. Its intuitive syntax made it accessible for beginners and very powerful for the experts, particularly in the fields of AI and data science. Actually, Python is usually referred to as executable pseudocode because it reads so much like English. It introduced words like if, else, def, using very simple English words inside the programming language. It is very heavily used in AI and machine learning systems and also used in web development. Companies such as Google and NASA, etc., use this Python to create AI systems and actually runs a lot of web apps. This AI systems is what has allowed us to have self-driving cars, facial recognition, recommendation systems, etc., etc., including things like the large language models we use, ChatGPT, Cloud, Midjourney, the generative AI, etc., etc. And now with this, we have arrived in the era of AI, artificial intelligence. In recent years, tools such as GPT-4 and uh, Cloud, uh, etc., have allowed people to create fully functional applications, which include websites, the softwares, etc., by just giving it or typing in well phrased commands in plain English. Using AI models, developers can now write fully functional code, generate images, or even create functional applications with nothing more than a well defined prompt. So, if you're creating like a web application, with this prompt, the AI will create for you the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, basically reducing development time drastically. However, it is very important to note that whatever you get is only as good as the prompt that you give. Hence, there's the rise of things like prompt engineering, which is something that is really, really growing right now. So as AI tools become more and more advanced, the ability to create very effective and high quality prompts will become a very valuable skill, much like coding was in the past. In conclusion, the evolution of programming has taken us from very basic mathematical notations to things like assembly and binary code in the early years to languages that very quickly resemble human speech. And with the AI tools that are rising right now, things like Casa AI, which interprets human speech, we are closer than ever before to speaking our programs into existence. And this is why I said English is becoming one of the most important programming languages in the world. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have gotten to the end, you're a true hero. See you in the next one. Peace.